Candy Tangerine Man is on Blu-ray. Right. Candy Tangerine Man is something that I guess you moved a lot of those back Ugh. in the day. I don't get it. And I met my man. We used to call him the Black Hulk. John Daniels. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know why? What we call him the Black Hulk? Yeah, Bad Shag. No, because he looked like uh, the actor. Lou Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno. See, yeah. you know, he's probably still living. He's going to hear this. So, <laughs> um, Candy Tangerine Man. So, um, all right. So, I, you know, I've had copies of this forever, but they've been so poor. Like the VHS that Unicorn put out, you could barely see what was going on. It was so dark and grainy. Um, a Vinegar Syndrome has completely restored this movie in a 2K scan from one of the best remaining release prints. The negative has been lost. The lab um, went out of business and, and the negative can't be recovered. So this is basically a, a, a not, not tremendously worn, but a, a release print and it's been restored pretty good. You know, I ain't asking you to choose me because that's got to be your own decision. But I tell you one thing, none of my ladies are anything but totally contented. The Black Baron, what you gonna do, honey, make me a queen? <laughs> Only God and the crown can do that. But I tell you something, I will make you happy, wealthy and wise. So John Daniels, who actually um, was a, a nightclub owner, partners with Jim Brown in, in a club called Mavericks Fat, Flat, which is legendary um, club in Los Angeles. It's like where everybody was hanging out back in the 70s. So he ran he ran the club and then he suddenly got the idea that he wanted to act. And um, so Candy Tangerine Man was one of the movies he, he was in. I mean, what, what are some other John Daniels starring roles? Well, what's that one um, where he's the um, disc jockey? Well, yeah, uh, getting over, getting over, and then black shampoo, of course. Which, yeah, which and then he did one where um, he was a he was in a supporting role, uh, I believe, with Gloria Hendry. So this this guy, another sense of audacity. He had a small part in um, in another film. Heat, Black Heat. Black Heat. Mm hmm. Yeah, so so he you know he's a local player in L.A. and he's starred in this movie. So the Candy Tangerine. So if you if you wonder what the title comes from, it's from his Rolls Royce, which is two tone Rolls Royce that he drives around Los Angeles on the Strip, getting collecting his money from his hose, and it's Candy Wrapple Red and Tangerine Orange. Those are the two tones. Holy shit! <laughs> I want that son of a bitch. Here's something interesting. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, finish. Yeah, so um, basically, so he is a pimp by night, <laughs> and then on the weekends, he is a uh, suburban father, married and living in a white community. And uh, so that that's the gimmick. But there's way more pimpery than there is. I mean, you want to think Tony Soprano well, is way more the, pimpery than the, there the is. The actress uh, who plays his wife in that. There is a nice sex scene with the woman who plays his wife, who is... Well, that, that was kind of toned down, especially for Marilyn Joy. Okay. Um, but the thing is, anecdotally, I wanted to t tell you there's a piece of history in this film. Mm -hmm. One of the actresses featured in the movie, mm -hmm. guess who it is? She was at one time married to Richard Pryor. She's the one whom Richard Pryor came home I and found her in car. bed and he sh when he has this, the incident where he shoot, shoots up the shoots car. the car, okay. Well, She's in that film. Look for her. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so Candy Tangerine Man, I, this this movie has a huge cult following, I'm not sure why. These are way <laughs> better pimp movies, I'm sorry. Um, the Mac is my number one pimp movie. We should do a pimp movie thing. Um, but this, this thing, uh, I mean, this guy has no charisma. <laughs> he, the, the, the Who has no charisma? John Daniels. And you just told me, be careful, he may still be alive when I call him the Black Hulk? <laughs> I 
I'm being critical. I'm not talking about his personal <laughs> attributes. I'm talking about the the actual film itself. Um, yeah, so I, I just didn't get it. I mean, I don't, I mean, I waited for a long time to see this movie and I was expecting something a little more. I mean, the premise is very um, intriguing, but they don't do anything with it. And then the, the caper is pretty generic. It's a, you know, basically, uh, you know, folks are trying to get the Baron out of business. Um, his hoes leave him, and then he's got to track down who's trying to take him out, take him down. And there's like a little turncoat thing that happens, um, and it's extremely violent. I mean, the way the, like he's beating up women, he's shooting people and stuff. I mean, I'm not really sure. I mean, is it what's the appeal is in general? What well, I think, um, what the appeal was for for those films mm -hmm. was, you know, back in the day one of the most popular enjoyments for the brothers and sisters, especially the brothers, mm -hmm. were the Donald Goins books. Okay. Okay? And that was one of the hopes we had with black exploitation that, oh man, finally, maybe they'll take some of these Goins books and mm -hmm. put them on screen. Mm -hmm. And that may very well happen. Uh, we'll get into the next se segment, but just seeing that trickster life, that under, Mm -hmm. Underground life was fascinating for for a lot of, and then you know, when you talk about pimp movies, um, the the allure mm -hmm. that Ron O'Neill had, you know, as as mm -hmm. as um, Superfly, mm -hmm. and this guy, yeah, you're right. As far as charisma is concerned, there was something about him that was kind of sort of like cool because mm -hmm. um, Black Shampoo. That was an interesting. Yeah, movie. you know, mm -hmm. he, yeah. yeah. But the whole thing is, the other thing is... I mean, people should see Black Shampoo before they see this one, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But, but, but that, and that was a rip-off of Shampoo. But you, you know, same, same idea. The guilty pleasure was the, the seeing that world and then the sexuality. That mm -hmm. was fascinating for especially so, the, the fellas. So this is not one of your classics either? Uh, I liked it back then, you know. It, but it's not a, one of the better ones. Okay. Well, it is on Blu-ray, and there's a, and then all is paired with Lady Coco. So, you know, basically for for your money, you get two cla you know, movies that have not ever been on Blu-ray before, for the price of one, which is cool. A year and a half without even committing a crime. Lady Coco, also directed by Matt Simber, starring Lola Falana um, and Mean Joe Green. Um, any thoughts on that one? Or? Well, once again, guilty pleasure. Uh, anytime I had the opportunity to see my girl, Doc Chalk, sweet, beautiful Lola, mm -hmm. and now to see her in a better light because there weren't really great prints of it around, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so getting to see it close to the way we saw it on screen. Mm -hmm. um, the F Gene Washington, who plays the lead role, mm -hmm. I thought, wow, you know, he was very handsome, mm -hmm. a good looking guy, former football player. What's that? This is Officer Douglas Fuller of the Carson City Police Department. Now, he'll make sure that you show up at the hearing tomorrow. And when we get to the hotel, you two will register as husband and wife. He was part of Matt Simber's The Black Six. Mm -hmm. um, I thought he was someone who could have gone further. But once again, you know, Lady Coco wasn't bad in terms of um, having some dramatic elements, a little mystery like mm -hmm. what's really going on. It's low budget, but it was entertaining. Okay, well, and it was remade with Pia Zadora like two years <laughs> later. Same exact plot. But, um, you know, but that's the, that's the genius of low budget filmmaking. And that, the Lady Coco actually has a, a com running commentary track with Matt Simber who I guess is in his 80s now. You wow. know, so this is kind of more bare bones than the Dolomites, but I mean, if you're a completist, I, I would recommend grabbing those now, because you never know, especially in this era, how long things are gonna stay in, in the market. And then uh, I believe the Black Six is available from another label, if you're interested in that one. That's an interesting action film. They took six NFL players and put them in a movie and 
God knows what happens after that. It's just a, a melange of action and bad acting, in my opinion. But The interesting thing about um, Black Six, if you remember um, Shaft's Big Score, mm -hmm. uh, one of the actresses who played um, one of his girlfriends mm -hmm. was Rosalind Miles. Okay. And when we first saw her, we, th we said, wow, if anyone looked ideal for the part of Martin Luther King's wife, oh, Coretta. Yep. Coretta, Rosalind Miles would have fit, fit the bill. Mm. So, um, so check those out. And shout out, thank you, Vinegar Syndrome, for sending those for us to preview. And, um, you know, it's, it's, big, it's big news. White folks love Bill Cosby so much. They had commercials, man, where little white children was riding his back eating tapioca out of his eardrums. Daddy Bill. Hmm? Hmm? And so, how do they kill my son and I can't get a commercial? For me, I feel that what Sydney was allowed to do in, in the heat of the night was the start of black exploitation.